Hello, and welcome to Quick Charge. I'm Mikey G, and it's Monday, April 24th. Tesla is releasing a new software update that brings back regenerative braking options for their electric cars. If you haven't driven a modern EV, here's the skinny. Instead of using traditional braking systems, electric cars often have a reverse power to slow down the vehicle, all while recuperating energy in the deceleration process. Tesla previously allowed drivers to adjust the strength of the regenerative braking feature, but they decided to eliminate this adjustment in 2020. But now, Tesla is bringing it back. With the update, the automaker is again offering standard and low settings. Using one-pedal driving is also a popular option among various EVs, letting the car come to a complete stop with aggressive regen. Last week, Tesla listed a new Model Y for the Canadian market, one that sells for a pretty low price, especially after incentives. But now rumor is coming out saying that the vehicle will be imported from the Shanghai factory. We say the word rumor because it's coming from a source that is not stellar in terms of accuracy with Tesla stories. After being built with the intent to only supply China, Gigafactory Shanghai quickly surged to become Tesla's most productive plant, and soon the European market was the first to bring them in. But now a new report from Reuters claims that the entire vehicle is going to be built in China and imported into Canada. Again, we don't know if this is accurate or not, considering that last year, the same publication released a similar story that the Chinese Teslas would make their way to the USA. Tesla is trying again to get owners with the older Model S and X vehicles with unlimited free supercharging for life to give up the perk with a new offer. For the first few years of the Model S and X, Tesla offered this perk, which over time has definitely pulled some value to the owners. Tesla ended the offer in 2018, but held to the agreement for the first wave of original customers. Earlier this year, Tesla made an effort to try to get them back off the perk by offering an extra $5,000 discount if they trade in the vehicle, and they are back at it again. The automaker is now offering owners six years of unlimited supercharging when buying a new vehicle. It's interesting that Tesla is trying to get people off the unlimited perk, just as they appear to be making the supercharger a profit center. Elon Musk does not seem as confident as he was before in the idea that the Twitter acquisition will aid Tesla shareholders. Amid the stock crash late last year, Musk mentioned that he would make sure the Twitter deal, and now the new parent company called X, that this would be beneficial long term. When asked for clarification during the shareholder meeting just recently, Musk responded, quote, Well, I don't know. I guess it could make it potentially easier to buy cars? Somewhat off topic here, because I think there's some benefit. I think probably there's some benefit, yes. Now, this tepid response has led to some concerns from investors, large and small. Some believe that having a CEO who is focused on multiple major ventures unrelated to Tesla is a genuine concern. Others note the complexities of Elon's personality and long-term thought process. The way I see it, Elon Musk only has so many hours in a day, even the most brilliant mind still has to interface with other humans in order to run a business. There simply isn't enough time in the day to talk to that many high-level people controlling things with such high stakes. Something's got to give. It may be Tesla, it may be Twitter, it may be SpaceX, it may be boring, it may be AI, it may be the X company. Edmunds Cars put a 2022 Rivian R1T and a 2022 Ford Lightning up against each other in the first all-electric towing contest. The test took place in a 200-mile strip in the California desert with some steep hills and valleys, and the results actually came pretty close. The Lightning averaged one mile of range per kilowatt hour, and the Rivian averaged 0.9 miles per kilowatt hour. In the real-world test, the big difference came in charging. The Lightning had a total charge time of 3 hours and 9 minutes, while the Rivian R1T was 3 hours and 21 minutes. This is despite Rivian's specification of charging faster on compatible chargers. In the end, Edmund says that both trucks performed similarly in terms of efficiency and were equally good at climbing steep grades with the powerful motors. The Rivian did perform better in terms of maneuverability. However, the Lightning has extra data and GPS to calculate more accurate range estimates and also blind spot warnings. Considering that Rivian recently announced a big towing update, we can only hope that Edmunds will go do this test all over again. But I really doubt it.
Volkswagen Group's battery electric vehicle deliveries saw a large increase of 42% year-over-year in the first quarter of 23, which came to nearly 141,000 deliveries. Nearly 70% of Volkswagen's EVs went to the European market, followed by China. The USA saw 11% of the EV total. Volkswagen has been making one hefty investment announcement after another, including battery and vehicle supply in North America, and even more to service the European market. Globally, Volkswagen plans to introduce over 70 EV models by the year 2028, which is far and above the plans of any other automaker. Volkswagen is clearly betting the house on the electric future, and so far, it shows progress. China's largest EV maker, BYD, is entering the new segment with an electric pickup truck. The concept was spotted with camouflage and a charging socket on the right side ahead of the expected debut before the end of the year. According to the report from Sina, the electric truck is expected to be officially unveiled by the end of the year with a starting price of around 400 to 600,000 yuan, which is around 58,000 to $87,000. Although China is not necessarily known as a big pickup truck market, the consumer base is growing and Car News China reports that pickups are becoming more popular as local governments are beginning to classify them as passenger vehicles instead of just commercial use. In today's community comment found on YouTube, Eric Schmidt says, Yes, there is a country called Canada north of your border. No, if you drive north of Buffalo or Seattle, you will not fall off the edge of the earth and float away into space. We also have Canadian dollars as money that are much more modern and colorful than a U.S. greenback. One day the U.S. will catch up. Well, Eric, thank you for the lesson in Canada, or should I say, merci Roku. I actually went to Canada one time and it was quite the hoot. Although they let me take in the hot dogs that I brought with me, the Border Patrol put up a big fuss with the guns that I had in the car. Their horses and hockey sticks were no match for my AR-15, but I was being nice to them, so I left it somewhere in Idaho till I got back. While I was in the Great White North, the drinking water was amazing, and the Indian restaurants are really good, even if it does look like Frisky's cat food in a bowl. As a holdover from the communist era, the Canadians had speed limit signs posted in kilos, which makes no sense, and strangely enough, their TV stations didn't have football. I'm glad that they repealed the law of driving on the wrong side of the road, so things were normal in that sense. But strangely enough, all the cages were empty in Chinatown, so that was kind of a bust. I was looking forward to feeding them the hot dogs for the first time. All in all, it was a pretty neat trip. I left with a bottle of maple syrup, a kids in the hall bobblehead, and a renewed sense of superiority bolstered by my condescending entitlement. Someday the history books will look back and wonder why Canada was its own country at all and not part of Mexico, the way that the Founding Fathers had drafted in the Magna Carta. Oh well. Thanks for your comment, and thanks for watching Quick Charge by Electrek. I'm Mikey G, and I hope you have a great Tim Hortons.